uppercut, uppercut, sonic boom! Well, hello there, humans of these other things, whoever you are, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, if you're lucky enough indeed to be doing it too. Welcome back to the channel, I'm Bushkin. Today's video is all about CQC. CQC is close quarters combat. It's what really makes your uh, socks roll up and down if you like hot dropping and doing all kinds of crazy things with cool kids in close quarters. But it's also a thing where you tend to die an awful lot. And I recently had some issues where I got a new device, the iPad Pro M2, and I found that my sensitivity was completely whack. I was dying all the time. And there was a lot of stuff that I wasn't really happy about. So what I did was instead of giving up, I uh, decided to fix my CQC and figured it was a great way to find some content gold. So basically this is CQC, Bushka style, how I fix my CQC and some of the things you can do that'll make your CQC better overall. So let's get cracking. Now, I'm going to leave a link in the description below for the sensitivity bit I did because I completely redid my sensitivity. I went over it from start to finish and it was really, really helpful for me and it made a big difference almost immediately in my gameplay. It was absolutely sensational. So fixing your sensitivity will make you a better CQC player straight away. But there's a couple of other things I did that really resonated for me. Uh, one of them was adjusting some of my in-game settings. Um, the other one was starting to really monster the FPP switch and using FPP a lot more than I currently do in the game. Now, the setting I'll show you quickly is, um, well, it's an obvious one when you think about it, but a lot of people don't really set it up correctly. And that is your field of view. Uh, and the reason this is important is because if you're running field of view correctly, you get a big advantage when you use FPP switch. Now this is a close quarters kind of field of view you have when you switch to FPP, and that's about the size of the player character. Now I'm gonna change my field of view and advanced controls uh, all the way down to 80, which is the base field of view. And that's the size of the player character in 103 in that red rectangle. And you can see how much big, how much bigger, <laughs> not how much big, how much bigger the field of view uh, change makes the player character in front of you. And that just means that when you switch to FPP mode, you're seeing a lot more player on your screen in a smaller space. So it's easier to put the reticle over a bigger target. That makes sense, right? If you think about it, it makes a lot of sense. And if you're switching to FPP when you're in these kind of situations and you're looking at a character through a doorway, there's a bigger target to hit. Your screen doesn't get smaller or larger. Your screen stays exactly the same size and the player character gets bigger. So that was a big change for me. The other thing, obviously, that I mentioned was improving my sensitivity. Getting my sensitivity correct, uh, figuring out that I didn't want to use um, aim acceleration or, you know, I'll go and check the sensitivity video out. That will show you everything. Um, really made a big difference. And that allowed me to control and think on the move and do cool things. Uh these guys are trying to pincer me. I'm pushing into them and they're trying to pincer me and uh, I won't let them. And I come around this corner and I'm feeling calm and collected. I've got my sensitivity right. I do a nice little bait with the door there, get the guy coming in. And then I screw up. Now the movement's actually been very clean. I'm pleased with this. I've done a lot of TDM stuff and I played a lot of war mode, etc. But that's a big mistake there. That guy was nearly dead. And I let him off the hook because I didn't FPP switch. And that's something I'm using a lot more. I set my controls up. This is why you have PP switch. Watch when I hit here. I am able to keep the reticle over the player because I'm adjusting as my knees act like shock absorbers and my player character jots down. If you're in FPP, when you hit the ground and fall, fall like crunch up, you don't lose your aim. And it's so much easier when you switch to that FPP and roll into a target that is larger on your screen than they are in TPP to actually get the clear. Now this is Three things we've talked about there that most people don't really sort out. Perfecting your sensitivity. Not just like close, but actually nailing your sensitivity settings. And secondly, changing your field of view to FPP and enabling the FPP switch and using that a lot. You do those three things, you are straight away going to be a better player. Then there's some other stuff. A lot of it is attitude. Um... For instance, if you're playing solo squads, it can be hard to be aggressive. I find that difficult, playing solo squads and being aggressive. 
I have to force myself like this to actually start off playing unranked and then switching. I warm up with a couple of unranked games like that, playing solo squads. And then I switch to solo squads on Asia on normal ranks. And I find that's the best way for me to get a good vibe going and get my CQC right and get a good blend of aggression and patience. Um, and then you've got to look at the other, like, look where I'm dropping. I'm dropping all the time on places that are going to have squads on them. Even one or two squads, like Gilligan's Island, uh, Rapunzel's Tower, um, Apartments. And you, you're in situations where that is way more prevalent. And this is actually an older clip, but I'm not using FPP switch enough here. But you can see I have got it enabled. Um, being patient, like that guy blew his ammo and I got him on the reload. That's the most common thing. How do you get calm like that? Well, you play a lot of games. You play a lot of games. I've been playing for five years. Um, so it's very hard for it to matter enough to me that I'm actually going to lose my cool. It has to be a really amazing squad wipe or a video or something before I start freaking out. Apart from that, it's all pretty much run in the mill. Like come second or something, it's not a big deal. Playing a lot of games will also have this um, effect of you will start anticipating movements from people. You'll drop a little bit, give up some distance for your damage and know that like you've just killed this guy's mate. You saw two parachutes on the way in. You know he's going to be pissed off. You're going to set it up so that he comes charging at you and then you're going to lay it out so that he jumps through a window in front of you and you kill him like that because you know you don't have a helmet and a headshot from a, a pistol here will kill you just as easily as a headshot from an AWM. So you just set it up, wait for him to come through the window. You know he's going to do it and you get, get the clear. Another thing is that I've been creating content on these weapons and I've been specifically choosing weapons that are CQC weapons. I've been making MG3 videos, uh, vector videos. I've got a video um, coming out on the uh, UMP, on the shotgun, the S12K. I've got a video coming out on the Scorpion. And what's that, what's that doing? Well, it's it's turning me into more of a CQC player because if I'm running those guns, I have to use them in the way they're intended to be successful. Like running the Scorpion means you've got to hit someone a lot of times to clear them. And that means that when you're playing, you're hitting them a lot and you're being patient and you're working your way through squads and it's improving your movement, it's improving your anticipation, it's improving your aim, it's improving your, basically your game sense, your your combat sense, your, your ability to read the play. So if you're running an M416 and a, uh, I don't know, double M4 or M4 and a Car 98, you're not going to be really running guns that are really, really good in CQC. And it's going to mean that your best gameplay is going to be lying down in a field spraying or something along those lines. Well, you're not going to get better at CQC. You're in fact going to get worse at CQC because you're not challenging yourself and you're not thinking through the gameplay. Like I know there's a guy behind me. I know he's jumping through the window to try and get shots. So I duck while I know the other guy is picking up sound cues on the outside and he's coming down and then I don't have much ammo left and I'm trying to get the kills with a scorpion. So I'm constantly relocating. And this is like a challenge. And you can set yourself challenges like this all the time where for me, it's going for scorpion content. For you, it might be, I need to get a kill using an FPP switch or I need to get five kills using a shotgun uh, or I need to land apartments. And even if you camp stairs and things, I need to land apartments and come out of there alive. Like these are little things that you can use to key in gameplay improvements. And they also, they're a great way to learn because if you're simply judging how good you are as a PUBG mobile player on winning chicken dinners, you're wasting your time. Um, anyone can win chicken dinners. I've seen people, hell, I've got friends who've made Conqueror in TPP who are not the greatest players, who can't play well in combat, uh, who panic and don't do very well in 1v4s or situations like that. And yet, they've won a lot of chicken dinners to get to Conqueror. So if you want that to be your mark or you want KDR, kill death ratio to be your mark, you're not going to improve. 
being afraid to lose kills or making sure that you kill enough bots so you keep your KDR up doesn't really improve you as a player. Um, the other thing that FPP switch does, which I should have mentioned earlier, in situations like that, is it stops you from doing that spin thing. In TPP, when two people are in, in fine, confined quarters in CQC, they spin around and it's almost like they're shooting you while looking away from you. And it can be really frustrating trying to track targets. If you're an FPP, that's not a frustration. It's not hard to do. It's, it's actually quite simple to do. And you should be doing more of it. Anyway, that's me. That's what I've been doing to improve my CQC. Make sure you check out the sensitivity video uh, in the actual uh, link. Make sure that you keep working on your game. I've got so much to improve on my game. I've been playing for five years, but I'm like a 50-year-old dude with bad eyes, and you don't get faster the older you get in terms of your you know, fast twitch motor skills. Um, so for me, a lot of it is literally just outthinking the opponent, and you can do that by getting your movement crisper, by uh, using FPP switch more, by working through. I actually thought he was in this room, so I unswitched FPP. I was like, oh, maybe he's on the roof still. And it wasn't, he was on the stairs. I nearly died. And that's, there's always something to take out of engagements. Even engagements you get beat in. When it's not the game glitching out on you or your ping screwing you over. Like this engagement here, I think he's dead, so I stopped firing. Even though I've done the right thing and I've FPP switched, and he's not dead, and I have to shoot him again. But that's just one of those things, right? On Bushka, look after yourself. Stay safe on the battlefield. And as always, uh, bye for now. FPP switch, baby. It's a thing.